fresh word from the Lord is titled, The Year of Taking Up Your Cross. As you take up your cross by faith in obedience to my word, you begin a new journey in your walk with me as my disciple. You will experience the powers of both death and life as the powers or manifestation of my finished works operating and functioning within you, not just inwardly, but outwardly as well. The awareness of these powers will begin to motivate and inspire you even further. Each new stop will be on the lighted pathway of death to life. The bloody footprints of the old making the way for the new that will continue to be manifest in your actions and reactions in every circumstance. Only look not back or put down your cross, for then the power will be halted as well, and you will be stopped in your tracks and unable to continue, continue to follow me. Can we realize how important this precept would be to Satan to block it? to block it. So the name of this is releasing the virtue and the power of Christ within. Greater insight into the death to life principle. Taking up your cross is an act of faith via our free will done in obedience to the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. And it releases the power of Christ's finished works that says so that these words can become subjective realities in our life. We can declare, I am crucified with Christ. And re thus removes through God's own power or puts off which is the putting to death part, the old man, the old human or former power of self, first and foremost. And then when that happens, it turns on or releases the power of the new man created in Christ Jesus or the putting it on. With all his virtue and power, being manifest, not just becoming available to us, though it, it does, but becoming manifest to where we experience it. So that instead, what we're learning through sufferings and self-denial and taking up our cross is not that we're losing anything. We are gaining His own strength. Supernatural strength well beyond the carnal natural human man to do what we could never do from within our own self. Thus releasing an infusion of resurrection power that comes to us immediately and we experience it subjectively. The new life, the new person being adorned or taking their rightful place into that situation or circumstance, whether in word, thought, or deed. We are freed up to not act or react out of our flesh, but out of our spirit. For the new, the power of the new trumps the power of the old which is the death and life working together. And the next encounter, there's even more new man power that becomes available to us. Instead, we rise up and walk in a new power of life, treading on serpents and scorpions and all the power of self, the world, the flesh, and the devil. This is our becoming more than conquerors. This infusion we begin to experience then becomes our motivation to continue to take up our cross. 
it's not a, it's no longer a negative it's now a positive it's to the gate to the manifestation of new life in Christ Jesus and the second we drop our cross or choose after the old we stop the release and or hinder the manifestation in our life we cannot walk on the path and follow Jesus without the cross by which we enter in and we're only going to enter in by faith and faith works through obedience out of this world into the next into his kingdom malfunctioning within us praise you Jesus I really saw that the cross is like when we, it's like plugging a plug into a power outlet and a lot of us have run around doing Christianity doing church without being plugged in to the virtue and the power of Christ and the cross is the only way. Now, if we have got to get this, taking up our cross by an act of faith and denying ourselves by a step of obedience. Oh my. The gate begins to open. We begin, it's a floodgate. Then comes the virtue of love that can turn the other cheek the, the control of our words and the thoughts and intents of our heart. No revenge, no retaliation. We feel that just dissolving as it no, as something that no longer has any power over us. If you put that old to death, it no longer has any power over you. And the beautiful part is that in that dying, the new is completely released. Is there anything that we can aspire to any more than releasing the resurrected Lord into our human subjective experience in every circumstance and every day of our life? And the sufferings release that. That's the, what plugs in to the outlet. Self-denial and sufferings are go together. It doesn't have to be that we're martyred that day or we're being stoned or we're being put in prison. Every time the flesh is pushed aside in an act of self-denial, obedience to the Lord, the power of the kingdom of God is released in our life. It becomes the greatest positive that there is in the Christian experience. And I, for one, believe that Satan has worked feverishly to blind many in the more modern Christian Christian experience from seeing this. And we read about Paul and see what happens to him in the early church and we kind of, you know, well, that was just for back then. They were having to build the church, of, you know, so forth and so on. No, it's not. And Jesus even said that our later days are going to be the really bad days, the latter days. This is the time... We, we hear a lot about the manifest sons and stuff like that, the manifest Christ. Well, yes, but there's not going to be any manifest anything without us really taking up our cross. And we're not going to do that without faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. We're not going to obey without faith. So to deny ourselves and take up our cross requires faith, and obedience out of our free will. It's just picking that cord, the end of that plug up, and walking over and plugging it in to the wall.